welcome back to the Red Bill Performance Channel. Ah, in case y'all are new or it's your first episode on the scene, thank you for joining us. And, uh, well, we have, well, you caught us right in the middle. You've caught us right in the middle of a project. We got us a 2002 73 Power Stroke here. I have fondly nicknamed Project Dopity Dope because of its shiny and dopeness. And we have just done a pile to it already. If you missed the last episodes, I'll get you caught up, but you can always jump over and watch those if you want to see what happened. But the gist of it is, we got this 7.3 out of this truck. Nothing wrong with it. it. Has a few little minor leaks and this and that. Just the owner wanted to, you know, beef it up a little bit. He wanted a little more steam out of it, a little more choo-choo. So that's what we're helping him with. So, all right, we already knew from previously being into it, we had horrendous port alignment on the manifolds because these are aftermarket dormant manifolds. We had to replace this one because of a hole that we us put in it not you know because they were just trash anyway so i had to do some fixing on port alignment fixing on how they set up to the head we had to do some adjusting to that uh i had punched an egt probe in here through the fender that's why we replaced the manifold took that egt pro moved it up here so we have a pre-turbo and we have a first tur post turbo egt uh, we've done studs, we've done injectors, let's see, new glow plugs, we've done the Adrenaline H-Pop, we did the fuel bowl delete, mainly because I messed up when putting in the fittings and cracked the fuel bowl. So he was okay with just getting rid of it. Woohoo! <laughs> and you know, we did the upgraded H-Pop lines, we got the crossover, uh, we did a new rear main seal, resealed the oil pan, uh, I went through the harness, buttoned it up a little bit. Uh, we did a EBV delete, that's the exhaust back pressure valve. We deleted it. You know, just pretty much just freshening up the whole engine, taking care of leaks and giving it the mods to supply all the fuel it needs. And uh, we did the four line kit, which is the kit that puts a line to every corner of the heads because used to it only fed here and here and these were plugged off. so kind of hurt the fueling just a little bit <laughs> but that has been resolved and like i said i got into the wiring harness i got rid of the plugs that we're no longer needing like the plug that goes to the stock fuel bowl water sensor we got rid of it got rid of the ebv sensor don't need it anymore and just generally just tidied it up you know i mean it's an older truck you know some of the harnesses and some of the tape was getting kind of you know weathered and falling apart on it so you know we just i was just addressing stuff like that. i still need to get some red heat shrink for this end here for this fusible link that goes over to the battery but you know that's that's a problem for tomorrow i guess and yeah if i got all that done to the engine oh and we got these riffraff fuel plugs in uh, all four corners too to help with fuel i mean done a complete fuel system on this. Like I said, hop back to the previous video, you can see more on that. Like, full fuel system has been gone through on this thing. Like, it's it's gonna be chooching quite a bit better than what it was. And we also have a, a Banks exhaust brake and a nice KC Stage 3, KC 300X Turbo. It's a 66, 73 i do believe and she's a bad unit she's a lot better than that factory one and that's going on there it's got a mild built transmission and you know an uh, air dog lift pump with a bottom sump on the fuel tank it's a sump fed air dog since i did the bowl delete we're not going to have the return from the engine to the tank the only thing coming to the engine is going to be feed and you know it's all getting it's all going to be fed through some nice fat half inch line. So like I said, as far as fuel wise, she's gonna have the capability to drink everything that, you know, the 7.3 probably wants. As far as a daily driver, because that is 
the end goal for this truck. Ultimately, that is the end goal for this truck. It's just daily driver towability. Like, he can fire it up, hook to whatever he wants, and head across country with the cruise control set and not even worry about it. That is the ultimate goal of this rig. You know, this ain't going to be some crazy powerhouse like we're hooking it to a sled tomorrow and we are twisting frames not what's happening here all right if that's what you come looking for maybe next week okay just <laughs> just not right now and yeah a whole slew of stuff's been going on like i said the engine's buttoned up and today we're going to dive into here and as you can see a lot of stuff has happened in the background like all the rust cleanup because it, all right this is a pennsylvania truck little disclaimer pennsylvania truck it has the cancer and it, it has it bad all right real bad but we have we we have been proactively chasing this cancer and working on it for years now i mean he's had the truck i think around five years five six years hell maybe a little bit longer than that but around that time frame and we have been proactively fighting this cancer the entire time and well in the background, the owner has been working on it while I've been taking care of, you know, the heart of the beast. The owner has been helping me out. He's been in here with one of those air needlers or descaler, depending on who you are or what you want to call it, you know, to, to each their own. But he's been in here working with that and hammers and buffers and just, just going to town trying to get as much of the, the scale and rust off here, you know, the heavy scale anyway. Just getting that off and getting it painted up. I mean, just aggressively getting after it with the rust oleum. I mean, endorsed here every day, all day. We love rust oleum. I live by it stuff because it seems like every rig that rolls in here is a Pennsylvania rig and it's completely ate up. And you know, I'm this isn't Pennsylvania, in case you are wondering. We're a little bit further south than that, but every rig that rolls in this door seems to be Pennsylvania. Even my personal tow rig is a pennsylvania truck and i have done gobs of rust work to it anyway i digress i know i'm getting long-winded here i'm getting carried away I, I i just can't help myself anyway in the background some stuff's been going on he ripped all that factory fiberglass sound deadening out here that oh i've just hated for years like every time i even look at this truck i just break out into like the hives and the itches and the oh hate it he finally got rid of it. It's just gone, and we got this stuff on here from, oh, we got the box right here. It's a Silas Sound Deadener Thermal Shield. And, you know, he bought it, he supplied it, and he found it, but it, he said he just got it off Amazon. And, you know, you gotta get a roller tool that goes with it, but he said it was super easy to work with. It's kind of that black tar-backed stuff, you know, like sound deadening. And he said it was easy where he said he, he liked it. <laughs> He said, if the transmission was out, I'd have ripped the rest of it off and done the whole bottom of the truck. He said, I would have went wild with it. And, you know, I wasn't against it, but I mean, he said it was easy to work with, and he likes it. And, well, that kind of gets you caught up here. So now what we're going to do is I got to dive in here. I'm going to pull this power steering box off because I've got to touch up the frame here. Why do I have to touch up the frame right here, you ask? Well, like I said... Pennsylvania truck, it's got the cancer. About a year ago, the power steering box got ripped off the frame. The bolts and everything come through the outer wall, the frame come right through it, and then a big chunk of the center side just come completely off of the box. I mean, just, and everything around it is still in fairly good shape. Like you get past it and you get before it, the metal is still pretty thick, pretty, you know, because we got the rust off of it, we put a lot of heat to it, you know, we. Put the torches to it to get any moisture out of the metal and we buffed on it we checked on both ends of the power steering box the metal is still good it was just right where the power steering box was at metal was gone i mean just gone so and pretty sure we was in a hurry if i remember right when we was doing it so i just had to get in here and get it done so you know because he had to get back to work you know he had to get back on the road so I dived in here and I, you know, we got after, and the truck was still 100%, it was whole, like the truck was together. So this availability of workspace was not a thing in here. This, like I was underneath the truck, like with my head back there at 
you know, the differential and an arm up tucked up in here around things, and you know, the gun barely fitting, trying to weld, which I mean, the box obviously wasn't in the way, but everything else was still in the way. Struggle to get in there. And once I get it tore apart, I'll get in here and let y'all get a little bit better view of this side. The welds, kind of atrocious. The overall aspect of what was going on, I think I did fairly well since I did it in a rush and you know, this side I had to kind of gob together because I couldn't actually get in here to work. But I'll take you around and show you the other side. Now you'll see here, this side, it was done a lot better. But I had room to work. We, you know, I was able to get the tire off and I was able to actually, you know, make it look like it never happened. And this is actually double layered now because where it was really bad rusted, I actually cut out of the original frame all the way back to good metal. I welded in good metal of the same thickness of the original frame at that level. Welded it in and then I ground down all the welds and then this here is actually a layer on top of it. And then I took another plate that was even bigger than the area that failed and grafted it on top of it and then smoothed it out to make it look like it's all, you know, one thing, but it's actually double walled right here. Like this entire area here is double walled. And the spot that ripped out was only like this big, you know, like right where the bolts are. That's the spot that ripped out. And then, like I said, I double walled a much larger area than what ripped out just to be safe so this side is done up and right this side needs no attention so we ain't gotta worry about this one but while we have access to it and while the engine's out we're gonna address this and make this actually good it's it's functional right now but it's nowhere near good <laughs> hideous if anybody was to climb in here and look at this thing they'd be like oh my god what did you do what is going on and i can't live with that like i hated the fact that when i originally did this it was like this but i did know in the back of my mind that at some point the engine was coming out to do upgrades so i was like i will make it good enough that it will work 100 percent it'll have the strength it'll hold up until i can actually get in here and do it right and it has it's held up and like he loves it. Like he said, he's like, I don't even care if you fix it. He's like, I don't even care if you do anything to it. He's like, there ain't one bit of play in the steering. The truck drives better than it ever did. He's happy with it. And you know, that's cool. You know, he's happy with it. And he's drove it for like a year now, just hauling ass down the interstate, this and that, going to, you know, daily driving it. And I mean, nothing, it ain't budged. There ain't a crack in nothing. The work has held up, but it's just, it's not good enough for me. Like, like I am, I you know I ain't gonna sit here and tell you I'm Boyd Coddington or something. All right, I ain't, I ain't the master. I ain't the guy that's gonna come in here and just you know make just amazing, beautiful art just you know flow from my fingertips with the most precise welds and this and that. I, I'm not that guy, okay. But I'm just good enough to be dangerous, and I'm picky enough that my work's gonna look at least, my work's gonna look decent, all right? <laughs> like, it just, uh, it has to. That being said, let's get, I'm gonna get this tore apart, and then once I get this tore apart, there's a couple things I gotta do right quick. All right, so we got this engine here, and it's kind of exposed. Like, I've got the exhaust capped off, and that this is an oil drain, that's an oil feed. I've kinda got them just covered up at the moment. I've got a little cap on our only fuel inlet. Like I've got the motor, you know, I've got the intakes taped up. I've got the motor somewhat covered up. But since I'm gonna be working right here, grinding, welding, beating, doing a lot more grinding, there's gonna be a lot of metal dust coming out of this area. I don't want any of that metal dust intruding in here. All right, this is why most shops have an engine clean room where they build and assemble and store their engines until it's time for them to go to work. Well, I ain't made it there yet. I don't have a room that I can just designate as an engine clean room. So I just have to try and be as cautious as I can 
while working around my engines. That being said, I normally have like those Moroso or like Jegs or Summit like engine bags. Like they're just a clear plastic bag that you just drape over the engine while it's on the stand and you know, it's just, just a clear, big clear plastic bag. You know, you just drape over top of them and you know, it just keeps dirt and dust and stuff like you know, metal shavings from accumulating where you don't want it. Well, I'm fresh out of those. And the ones they got coming, like they'll be here when they get here. I mean, you know, shipping these days, it's atrocious. That being said, I do have some just, you know, some clear plastic. So I'm gonna cut that up, get it draped over it, do a little duct taping maybe, probably. I don't know, hard to say at this point. But I'm gonna get that draped over it so that way the engine has as much protection as I can give it right now. And then once I get that done, I'm gonna dive in here and get this tore apart. And as soon as I get that done, I'll get y'all back in here so y'all can see where we're at and I can get you caught up on things. So be patient, be right back in like, probably be like 2.3 seconds for y'all. Gonna be an eternity for me. But we'll be right back. Progress has been made. First, let's touch on this. See this fine pile of material here? And I had swept before I started on the project day. I had cleaned up, I had swept the floors. And y'all probably can't tell it on camera, but there's still kind of a haze in the room. See this here? This is outside of the few little bits of random stuff that fell out of the truck when I took out the inner fender wheel. And we'll touch on that. And you got your big chunks of rust here. Just, oh yeah, you know, typical Ford droppings. But all this powder, all this, it's all rust and metal filings. And I barely did any grinding so far. Mainly just getting paint and rust off. And that, and it's all fine stuff. I mean, just fine. And that's why it is important that if you have anything such as an engine. You know, and that's what I swept up just from this area. It wasn't even like going out and getting extensive. I just swept up right here in this area. That's where that pile come from. That's why it's important if you have an engine. Get it wrapped up. Cause that powder and that dust, it just goes everywhere and gets in everything. It don't care it doesn't discriminate it is invasive now to the star of the show i have things almost ready to start working on i still got to get in here and grind down on these welds but I, like i said i told you i'd get in here and let y'all see my masterpiece <laughs> if one was to call it that and uh well let's get in here and look at it just look at it now, as you can see, some of the welds are all right. You know, some of them, and I mean, even these down here, even though they look kind of funny, it's because the way the metal transitions, this is on top of this piece of metal and then it comes and ends up as a, a butt to the metal. So the weld kind of transitions, but it's still, it does need to be touched up. I'm gonna, all this, every bit of this is gonna be ground down. Well, except for this, because this is thick and part of this and ain't even on the frame. Like this is all a solid. Do you like my, you like my hammer forged piece here? See, that's the indentation I was talking about where the frame wraps around said starter. Yeah. Me and a hammer spent several hours coming together with that piece of metal to make that. Man, and then see these just, I mean, can y'all actually get in here and respect these welds? I mean, they're atrocious. I know. I mean, hideous. Like, your mother probably wouldn't even kiss that. I mean, it's that bad. Well, like I said, I could, like, this entire top side, I couldn't even see it to weld it because I had to weld it from the bottom side because, you know, when everything's in here, you're not getting right here to weld. You're not getting right here to weld. You're not doing it. <laughs> not very well. Not without stripping half the, sh 
half the stuff out of the engine compartment to do it. So all this was welded from me laying down here and like my head was back in here and my hand was wrapped up around here and I was, you know, my hand was like up here. Like, I don't know, I was, I was a contortionist. I can't even honestly tell you how I got to all this. I just remember that it was fun. It was very, very fun. But anyway, I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna grind down these. Right here, we're gonna grind these wells down. We're gonna grind all this down, get it all down and flush. And I might even cut back in a little groove again. Like, you know, actually grind in a little bevel. And we'll re-weld all of this. And then I'm gonna do some finish welding around here. And then I'm probably gonna get me a plate. Probably gonna, probably gonna trim this little edge back here a little bit more. And do, uh, get me a plate and put in here. I'm probably gonna weld another plate there. And I haven't decided how I'm gonna go about making my plate for this, but I think I'm gonna cut some more out here. I think I'm gonna make me another plate for that area too. Now I'm just gonna finish weld stuff. And then we got this bottom side over here. Uh, oh, let's see, which lights do I need to turn out? Because the lights start fighting the camera at a certain point. All right. Uh, and then you got this bottom side here. Right here, yeah, I see it. Now see, now this I did grind into. I went ahead and ground in here and got some gouges in my lines and stuff. Getting it prepped and ready to be welded. And the only reason I did that and I didn't you know, leave the welds to show y'all like I did the top side was because bulls, that doesn't ever even worse. Nah, nah, I didn't even want to show y'all that. <laughs> and that's the kind of stuff where you know, you just pack your bags and leave town. Never to show your face again. It was bad. And you know, on top of the excuses of I couldn't get to it, I couldn't see out of a lot of bad angle, my neck was broke, my ankle was twisted. You know, on top of all those excuses, it was also a borrowed welder. Wasn't even my welder. Wasn't 100% familiar with it. And it was too small. Like I had that welder turned up just about all the way to do what needed to be done here. Cause you know, it was, it's a sheet metal welder. It's, it's a little water and you know, to the said person, they let me borrow it to do what I need to do. I am forever grateful because he, he has let me borrow that welder on several occasions with me promising every time that I borrowed it. This is the last time I swear. I swear I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out tomorrow and buy my welder. I promise you, I'm, I'm going out. I won't have to ask you again. I'm getting my own welder. <laughs> yeah, I did it. <laughs> Just took me like, I don't know, six years to do it. But I digress. Borrowed welder. I was upside down on my head with a broken neck and a twisted ankle and a pulled butt cheek. That's why these welds look atrocious. All right, now that we got all the excuses out of the way, it's time to fix it. And I don't know if y'all happen to notice. I did some buffing over here. And that bolt just goes here. I just took it out. But we have a pinhole here. See that? See that right there? See that? See, 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 see. Do you see it? Look at it! Well, that's a hole in the frame. And it's not a hole like that one. Or like that one. Or like that one. Or like that one. Or like any of these. That hole was put here by rust. So, and if you can't tell, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it's kind of a dimple right there. It's kind of sunk in. Where when he went over this with the the scaler or the needler, it actually bent in the metal here. So I'm gonna have to cut out a section here and keep cutting back till I get into some thicker metal, into some better metal. And we're going to make a patch piece for this area here. Would I normally worry about this? Not typically, not if it was, you know, a coilover truck, you know, a newer coilover truck or something like that. But this is, in fact, a leaf sprung truck. And the front hanger is up here. And that hole is there. So I need to cut that out and reinforce the frame there 
you know, I need to, I need to put the support back in the frame so everything stays true. And that's the main reason why I was throwing so much extra metal at this. I'll go down here and turn off that bright light. I'm sure y'all just enjoy looking at that. Ah, it's so bright. All right, now that we don't have a blinding light, that's why I'm throwing so much extra metal at this. Because, you know, like I told you the other side, I actually cut out the bad spot in the frame, welded it back in, and then I put a plate on top of it. So, you know, the other side of the frame is double wall thickness now. And then I put this plate on top where there was nothing, there was no problem on top. Like the frame was still thick up here, it was still solid. It was just a hole here and a hole just like this on the other side. I mean, that's so it was the top and the bottom of the frame was actually still thick and holding strong. But I'm adding more steel to it because, yet again, it is a structural part of the frame. Not only does it have to hold the steering box, it carries the weight of the truck because the front leaf spring is up here. So this is a structural and necessary part of the truck. And I'd rather just throw a bunch of steel and a bunch of weld at it than, you know, just try and make it look like it never happened. That being said, I am going to get out my cardstock aided design or CAD as we know it. And I am going to start working on this. I'm going to start figuring out how I want to go about it, cutting out and shaping and getting things to where I want it. And I'll pick back up with y'all once I know what I'm doing. Hey. <laughs> Still wrapped up. My cart is a wreck. Our metal piles growing. Well, things have happened. We're getting there. Let's climb over in here. Ah, ooh, ah. Let's get in here. Yeah, there we go. All right. As y'all can see, we are getting there. Things are happening. I've got my little patch pieces made up and I just got them kind of sitting in there. And uh, and just so you know, those holes wasn't that big, like behind the power steering pump, like they were much smaller holes. This was much tighter. But where this is essentially, see it's on top, or this plate is essentially on top of what the old frame was and where these were so close to them and like this piece come up real quick it didn't it wouldn't as low as this piece i have here it was this piece of frame started coming up real fast so it was actually up above this so in order to make it easier for me to transition from this plane to this plane and this plane I cut the frame back a little bit more and made my filler pieces a little bit bigger that way I have more room to make the transition from the two different you know planes you know, high plane low plane and same thing on this side you know it's got two little small pieces I've got all of my you know spots beveled in Got all the old welds ground down so I can get in here and just you know, burn in some hot ones. You know, not even play any games with it. Mm. And I didn't even fully weld around this last time. Now this is gonna be fully welded. Plus this piece is gonna be filled in. This piece is gonna be filled in. Like this whole area is about to get tied together way better than what it was before. Now as that goes, Remember how I might have mentioned, or I might have, you know, brought up a pinhole, you know, over here? Well, things escalated. That's my hand for reference of scale. The pinhole was here. Yeah. Things kind of fell apart there. You see, what happened was, was you know let me get my little hammer out of the way see right there's the pinhole that is the indeed pinhole right there 
that's it. And it was, you know, down here. We see what happened was I cut out this piece here and I was like, man, that metal right there is thin everywhere. Cause I mean, look, I mean, it is, it's just, it's thin everywhere. So I was like, you know, I'm going to venture up and I'm going to go up till I get into some good stuff. And as you see here, that's nice and thick. That's the top. That's up here. See, it's thick. Go over to the side. You can clearly see how it gets thinner. It gets thinner as you get, like, it slowly gets thinner and then you get to like right here where this piece was on here and it just makes a drastic dive it comes from really thick to mm, mm, paper in a hurry and i was like all right well i might have to you know you know uh make an angle piece you know i might have to make it a little a little this way i might just have to go back just a little bit so i cut out just a little triangle and I was like it's still thin and then I cut out a big triangle and as you can tell like this one shows it beautifully like thick 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 nothing <laughs> and that is pretty much and seeing that piece went right there it was right there see it's just thick 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 thin so I was like well I'm gonna keep running back till I actually get into some good material and that's what led to this I did I gave him all the way back here got a little patch piece get on out of there i went all the way back until i actually got into something thicker some better stuff but this entire bottom row here is still a little thin so i just have to be careful whenever i burn that in because i don't want to cut it past my roll here and so it, this is going to work and this is going to be the size of my little patch piece on this side and since it is so thin and i'm taking so much I've been going back and forth on whether I want to make another piece, a bigger piece, to put over the whole thing and double wall it. But honestly, I don't think it needs it. I think with the addition of new steel going back in here, you know, getting welded in, in its place, I think it's going to take care of it. Because this is just an add-on piece. Like, see, this piece is riveted in. It's welded up through here, but these double points only start from this cross member forward just to you know give rigidity to this front part here you know to help give rigidity so as long as the main c channel as long as the main frames are still thick and good which i think they are because i believe whatever the main channels are made out of whatever grade steel this is i think it's actually a better grade steel than these insert pieces that are on the inside because it didn't seem to rust near as bad as you know these inner pieces here or maybe it's just how it holds water i don't know i ain't no smart guy i just you know i do cool stuff sometimes but yeah so i just got to get this piece made up here we get back in there it's so much easier to put it in the first time Anyway, well, y'all get the point. Y'all get the gist of it. I gotta make me up that piece. I gotta make up those two little pieces. And then I just gotta weld all this in. So, I'm gonna go figure out when and where my metal is. What is up, everyone? What are you doing? Are you sleeping? Wake up. Stuff is happening. Again, as usual. You know. A little carving over here, you know, a little, little arts and crafts, you know, going on. Oofta. Yep. Yep. That is a hammer. And that is indeed a really large nail. Don't even ask. Okay, you already asked. I'll let you know. Well, you see, like, this piece here, it wasn't exactly what you'd call exact. You know what I mean? You know? It wasn't exact. So, I got a few tacks on this end. And once I got a few tacks, I was able to start working it. You know? Getting it to... Because this frame... You know, it, frames are not what they appear to be. 
they have curves and arches and bends and this and that just constantly everywhere and you don't really notice it until you take a flat piece of steel and you're like i'm gonna make this flat piece of steel go there and then you're like mm, ain't none of this ain't, ain't none of this flat valuable lesson to everyone i digress started back here and i started working my way and then by the time i got you know up in about this hard curve here which you know i already had these hard bends in it but like i said they the piece just wasn't exactly right. So by the time I got up here, this piece was in the frame. If it was out of the frame, it wouldn't be that big deal. You know, I can take the hammer and work it in. But it had settled inside the frame. So I needed a way to get a hold of it and get it out. And then as I was getting one side, the other side was a little bit further off. So I needed a way to twist on it and pull on it, manipulate the metal to where I needed it. Thus... You just weld your old welding hammer on there and just go to town with it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly acceptable. That is using what resources you have at hand for what you need. I mean, it works. I mean, look, obviously, it works. I mean, she's tacked up. She's ready to rock and roll. And, you know, this side of her. The only reason this has a nail welded to it is because by the time I got done with this piece, and, you know, and see, it's important to preheat everything because you have to heat your metal and not only the pieces you're welding, but everything around it. Because if it's not hot enough and you weld, it's the cooling down of the metal, the rapid cooling, just the <laughs> the escape of the heat. And that's what gets you. It's that rapid release of the heat that cracks your weld. So you have to heat everything. So this was all very hot. You know, I, I got in here with my trusty old uh, map gas torch. And as y'all can tell, new tank. Been using this thing quite a lot. Love that. Very handy. If you ain't got one, get yourself one. Anywho, well, like yeah, I was saying, by the time I had got to this one, the heat in my little old magnet here was already so high that it was, you know, it wasn't really, it wasn't, it wasn't doing the magnet thing. And right now it's just so covered in, you know, metal chunks that it just doesn't want to work. We'll find that later. Anyway, my little magnet then got so hot that it wasn't magnet in no more. Cause I don't know if y'all are aware of this, but you start to lose magnetism with heat. Yeah, the harder metal gets and the harder the magnets get, just the less they magnet. Who knew? But anyway, that's why I had to weld this nail in here because I wasn't able, because I wasn't able to hold this piece with the magnet, you know, get it tacked. So I welded that on there and then I was able to beep, 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 get her tacked right in there. Ah. I know for y'all it's been about 30 seconds from this stuff not being in here to this stuff being here. For me, it's been a couple hours. <laughs> that piece there took me all like 15 minutes to make. And then it took me like another 20 minutes to get to where it's at. So that one wasn't bad. These little guys, there's a couple hours spent over here. I mean, they were just not friendly at all trying to have not too much light but it's really hard and i mean you wouldn't realize just how complex a bend is in this one area and like you know the frame's just all these <laughs> does all kinds of stuff there's several hours with the vise and a hammer and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to get those right to where they'd fit in there just right but hey I think it's going to be worth it in the end. So, now that I've got y'all caught up, y'all see what's going on here? I'm going to get my little map gas back out. I'm going to heat everything back up. And I'm going to get in here and I'm going to do I'm going to do some welding. I'm going to do some finished welding. I'm going to get this thing welded out. Y'all, uh, y'all, uh, don't go very far because we'll be back in like 2.3 seconds. Just wait and see. I promise you. We'll be right back. All right, guys. 
You got me. You finally got me. I messed up. And you see, what happened was, you know, I was excited. I had, I got it all wielded up, I got everything put back into place, and I was like, I gonna, I gonna paint it. I gonna paint it. Woo! And uh, I didn't realize, especially by the time I got on like coat number 12, how well the paint would cover up the welds. So, while it is all filled in, you know, everything is done. It is all here. She is, you know, completed. I should have picked up the camera before I put paint on it. That way y'all could actually get a good look at it. You know, see what's going on. But, I digress. I messed up. I won't do it next time. Next time we're doing a little welding project or building something, filling in something, repairing something, whichever, I'll make sure before we put paint to it that I pick up the camera. But it is done. Our filler pieces are in. It's welded and it is far better than what it was before. I promise. Maybe kind of sort of. And I have the fuel line ran from the air dog now up here. You know, the new fuel line. You know, ran from the air dog back there up to here now. And right here, it's kind of out a little bit. But with the strap holding the transmission up, I can't really get the fuel line where I want it. So once. Once we get the strap off the transmission, I can, I'll can i get that fuel line tucked away better. But either way, all this is done now. The paint is still kind of tacky, so I'm letting it cure up a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna get the, that steering box put back on here and get all the lines hooked back up. And then we can put the engine in this bad boy. All right, we're finally there. All right, we can do it. Engine can go land right here we can get this going so if you'll give me a second i'll get that put on and get right back with you it's a puzzle yay look at it would you just look at it it's all back together it's ready I even got the heads of the boat over here. No touch up paint on them. Just spritz, 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 spritz. Oh, yeah. This thing is finally ready for the engine to go back in. But I'm going to let it sit overnight, let the paint cure up just a little bit more. Which, I mean, I did heat the frame and everything pretty decent before I painted it. So it's helped, you know, at least kind of flash cure it. But. I'm gonna let it sit up overnight, let the paint harden a little bit more. You know, I got the old Radley heater running, so it'll keep it. I got it set warm enough in here to, you know, set up the paint anyway. So we'll let this harden overnight, and then in the morning, well, we're gonna get that stabbed in here. Yeah. But. This video is done. All the stuff we need to do with the engine is done. And next time around, we will be stabbing it in the truck. We got a few little things to do, a few little housekeeping items. So it's hard to get it to show quality while he's using it. I mean, this man works for a living. He he ain't got a lot of time to spend with it one down. Like this is, this truck's already been down longer now than he wants it to be. But, you know, things happen, you know, I broke stuff, other stuff we had to wait on for shipping, you know, stuff like that happens. He understands, but he does want it back. But that being said, this video is wrapped up. We are done here. Uh, on the next one, come back, we're going to get the engine in and we're going to have our first start on the next one. For sure. Y'all can bet, y'all can bet on that one. Next video is going to have the first start in it. This thing's going to be popping off and running. And you know, hopefully I don't screw up. You know, hopefully I don't, you know, 
hopefully I don't send a rod out to the side of this thing or something, but yeah. It's been fun. Uh, if y'all enjoyed the content, you're welcome to come on back. I try to make weekly uploads and I'm looking forward to seeing y'all on the next video. But this one's done. Leave a like and a comment down below. And as always, I appreciate y'all. Love having you. And I'll see you on the next one.